So, hello, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Atriya Vedantam. Uh, I am uh, uh, I am currently a student of IIT Madras. I am pursuing B.Tech in Electrical Engineering. Uh, and uh, today I will be explaining uh, uh, the chapter aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids. So, so this is in that. So, a small brief intro about uh, aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids. So, first, uh, I think uh, all of these, I think. Uh, these three are called functional groups, right? Uh, functional groups are in any organic compound. They give you some certain characteristic uh, observations of a similar type of compounds. So we have a, the type of compounds that they, uh, ex the properties of the exhibit are similar in nature. And these three uh, are examined together because they have a common, they have common features. As in, they're all, they, they all have a carbon oxygen double bond. So, I think aldehyde, as everyone knows, it's a CHO group, uh, a ketone is a C double bond group, and a carboxylic acid is a COOH group. So, it, 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 all of these have a, uh, a carbon oxygen double bond. So, here a few examples given. Acyl halides, amides are all derivatives of carboxylic acid. They are derived, they replace, they are replacing OH by uh, either a halogen or an amine group or an amine group. So similar for ester and an anhydride also. Again, these are all replacements of OH. So uh, uh, if you replace, you can add anhydride. So that's that. Uh, so you have a few, so a few common names also good to know. So uh, this is called acetaldehyde. Even though the it's called benzaldehyde, uh, uh, you know, you have the actual, of course, the actual name also has to be uh, using IUPAC uh, nomenclature. So this will be ethanol. So, but this is a common name. Uh, so again, acetone is a very common uh, name uh, that's used. However, this actually should be called, uh, so it's in there are three carbons, it should be, it should be a derivative of probe. Propane is, uh, is uh, a carbon chain with three carbon atoms, so it should be propanone. So that's, and you have, you know, acetophenone, propiophenone, these are all, uh, these are all common names, right? So they, are in, they don't follow any particular uh, logic, but then they're just there, you know, because it's easy to visualize what it might be, you know? So you have an aceto group here, you can think of it that way, you can see a phenone as it here. So that's how it, these names are derived. Okay, <coughs> now, so now here is a here is section detailing uh, how IUPAC uh, nomenclature is done. So uh, so that is that. So so now this shows what the structure of the carbonyl group is. Well, you know, since it's a double bond, this carbon has to be sp2 hybridized. So it means that the carbon oxygen uh, this the C the C C double bond group has to be planar. That's an important thing. That's a, and then you have a two different canonical forms. These are both called canonical forms. They form a resonance hybrid. However, this form is far more preferred than this form because it has no, it has no charge separation. Uh, you know that uh, canonical forms with, uh, without charges are much, contribute to the stability of the overall hybrid uh, more than the, uh, the one with charges. Now, these are some preparation techniques. Uh, so these are some popular preparation techniques that I think are useful to know. So this is the uh, uh, H2 uh, with uh, palladium and uh, barium sulfate. So it's called ro Rosenmull reduction. Similarly, so ETAD reaction, use of CrO3 to oxidize. So if you think about it, a useful fact to keep in mind is uh, whether a reaction is an oxidation or a reduction. It's simple to see that if you start with something like toluene and you end up something with a benzaldehyde, you're adding oxygen, right? So you can keep in mind that this agent or whatever whatever you need to add should be an oxidizing agent because it should oxidize your complex. So that's a, you know, a general, if you ever, if you, like if you get confused between uh, reactions, whether, you know, whether you have to, uh, I don't know, add a H2 or something of that sort, think about the fact that uh, you need to you need to oxidize toluene, not reduce it, and therefore it can't possibly be this. It needs some sort of oxidizing agent. In this case, it is chromyl fluoride. So this is the cyclo cyclo chlorination. Chlorination, of course, this is not an extremely well preferred reaction. 
uh, it is it is fine to an extent, but fluorination, you know, can is uh, quickly it's not very controllable, right? You cannot exactly control whether you have three chloride or or, or you'll have uh, two or, or you'll only have two chlorine atoms. So hence the uh, formation of the product is not an entire uh, it's not a guaranteed one. So uh, however, then then you have uh, then you have few other you have preparation of ketones. So that's right. So so you have uh, here. I'm not I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not going to do examples, uh, but uh, you can uh, uh, you know you can see how you might convert hexanol to hexanal, right? Uh, cyclohexanol to hex cyclohexanol. Think about what kind of process will enable this to happen, right? It will be an oxidation process. So you know your acid should be some, some oxidizing agent. So you know that uh, if we, uh, you know memory a little bit that is. And address here also. So then you have physical properties. Uh, so physical properties talks about uh, boiling points. What is a gas? Methanol is a gas at room temperature. Whereas ethanol is a volatile liquid. Other aldehydes and ketones. Uh, see, the more number of carbon atoms you have, the less volatile it becomes. It 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 remains. It prefers to remain in a solid state. If you have only one or two carbon atoms, it has the chance to be in the gaseous state. So, right? So, that is the general way of how uh, molecules behave. Uh, so, higher the molecular mass is more likely to be in the solid state at room temperature. So, this is about solubility, how, uh, how this kind of hydrogen bonding can uh, you know, increase the stability of ketones. And one important fact to keep in mind is that solubility of hydrogen and phenols decreases rapidly at increase in dry alkyl chain. This is what alkyl chain is hydrophobic in nature, right? It doesn't, uh, you cannot have hydrogen bonding with a carbon and a hydrogen is not known. So it's hydrophobic. So the more carbon atoms you have, you're actually increasing the hydrophobic nature and you're definitely decreasing the solubility. And then this is something about odor, lower aldehydes have pungent odors. However, uh, many naturally occurring aldehydes and ketones are used in blending of perfume and flavoring agents. So that's an important thing. And uh, another in interesting fact in the context of uh, perfumes, esters are sweet smelling. So that's an important uh, thing to keep in mind. Okay, so you can detect an ester with a with a evaluation of a sweet smell. So later, I think we'll come to the esterification reaction. We will revisit this concept again in the laboratory. If you want to know whether an esterification successfully occurred between an alcohol and an acid, then you will look for the, uh, the characteristic sweet smell of an ester. So then you have reactions with aldehydes and ketones. So this is nucleophilic addition. So nucleophile, nucleophile. So what is a nucleophile? Some people might get confused between what a nucleophile and what an electrophile is. A nucleophile is something that you can think of as wants a nucleus. Okay, that is something you, you can see. It's an easy way to remember what a nucleophile does. It wants the nucleus. So, in this context, it is trying to attack the carbon. So, what what exactly does the nucleus mean? It means the one with the delta plus charge. And similarly, an electrophile wants. You can think of it as. It, it, you can think of it as wants wants. Uh, you know, as something as wants electrons. By nucleus, I mean the protons. Okay, are positive charges. So this will be electric. This will be some uh, attracted to some sort of negative, uh, negatively charged atom. Okay. So well, this is the first step. Note that uh, there is a loss of planarity. The moment the nucleophilic attack occurs, planarity is lost. And then uh, finally, you have uh, the H plus attacks to uh, to make this O, o minus as OH. And you have an addition product, which is sp3. Now, the remember is an sp3 carbon. So the hybridization of the carbon atom changes from sp2 to sp3. That is something that's given you in this process. The tetrahedral alkoxide is produced. Alkoxide just simply means it's an alkene with a combination of hydroxide. So that's an alkoxide. Okay. So now uh, uh, reactivity. Aldehydes are more reactive. It's very very important. Aldehydes are generally more reactive than ketones. This is due to two reasons, steric and electron. First, we clearly see that in this, this, uh, 
so let's say we denote the carbon chains with something like that. You can see that the carbon atom is relatively free, but this is blocked on both sides very, very, by very bulky groups. Sorry. So therefore, it is difficult for a nucleophile to approach this as compared to a nucleophile approaching that. Therefore, aldehydes are more reactive than ketones due to steric reasons. Second one is also due to electronic reasons. The two alkyl groups here, you know that alkyl groups are plus I, right? So therefore they they uh, therefore they reduce the, the delta plus star here. They sort of make it smaller because the alkyl groups were uh, electron releasing groups, right? So they uh, they uh, the electron density around the carbon atom is increased in ketones. Because the electron density is increased, the electrophilicity, that is how, how electrophilic this carbon atom is, reduces. As the nature, the nucleophile is not as strongly attracted. So therefore, ketones are again less reactive than aldehydes. These are two reasons. Then you have some important examples of nucleophilic addition and element, addition elimination. So this is the cyanohydrin formation, a very important reaction. This is bisulfite addition. Bisulfite addition is a very useful test because the equilibrium lies largely to the right for the most aldehyde and left to the left of most ketones. This means the ketones, you can think of it as ketones, do not give bisulfite addition test. So that's an important point to keep in mind. Whereas aldehydes do. So that's a good way of differentiating between aldehydes and ketones. So this is because steric reasons, right? Bisulfate is a very large compound. And for this table, we have to attack this. At least one, one thing should be a free hydrogen. If it's clamped both sides by some very steric alpha group, then it's difficult for the approach and the equilibrium lies in the limit. And it, like the reaction does not proceed. Now, addition of Grignard reaction is something that you already have done. Grignard reaction acts as a nucleo, uh, nucleophile. We have an R, M, G, X, right? So the R has a delta minus. So that's where this delta minus attacks the R nucleophile. So that's, that's what happens. Yeah. Addition of alcohols, again, you, form, you have a hemiacetal formation. Uh, and then uh, upon addition of another RNH, you, you get a uh, acetal formation. An acetal is something where both the carbon atoms are flanked by two, uh, two separate OR groups. Now, the interesting fact about an acetal is that once you reach an acetal, you cannot go back to an aldehyde. It does not have a free aldehyde group. This is very important later in biomolecule. It doesn't have a free aldehyde. Later in biomolecules, uh, you get to see that uh, the formation of an acetal linkage uh, essentially means that it can doesn't because it doesn't because have a, a free uh, uh, aldehyde group, and therefore it won't give you some common tests that aldehyde groups give you. So similarly, ketones react with ethylene glycol form a ketal formation. This is a very important reaction again. Uh, this ketal, uh, so just like you have an acetal here, you have a ketal here, okay, it, acetal is because it's, it's an, this is an uh, aldehyde, right, this is a ketone, so this is a called a ketone. So one was, remember that even though they given HCl gas, the important part is should be dry, okay, this is a dry HCl gas. So now addition of ammonia derivatives, so, uh, in the, so an interesting thing to see is that uh, uh, if you have any any group with Z with, uh, with an NH2 here, this will give you a C double bond NZ, okay? And for different compounds, this can mean different uh, formations. For example, 2,4-diphenyl, uh, two, two, uh, dinitrophenyl hydrophone, 2,4 is a very important uh, uh, compound. This is called 2,4-DNP. It's a a popular test in organic chemistry. So, so 24 DNP test is given by uh, compounds which have a R group. Now reduction. Reduction again is it's the opposite of oxidation. It's addition of hydrogen, right? It, that's the one possible definition. There are multiple possible definitions. So of course the better of which is uh, as addition of electrons. Think about it as an electronic uh, change rather than an addition of a certain atom because it's a more general phenomenon. However, uh, here we will uh, reduce ourselves to just uh, addition of hydrogen in this simple context. So LiLH4, lithium hydride is a very uh, powerful reducing agent. However, 
uh, an important thing to note from the point of the industry is that it's a very costly reducing agent, LIAH4. So it is uh, generally not that preferred because it takes cost a lot of money. Whereas sodium borohydride is a cheaper reducing agent, but a less powerful, less powerful. So you now you can reduce it to hydro hydro hydrocarbons with uh, Clemenson reduction. Clemenson and diversification are the two different types of reactions. Zinc amalgam HCl and this is hydrazine with uh, KOH and ethylene glycol. Now oxidation, aldehydes and ketones can be oxidized, aldehydes can be oxidized to carboxylic acids and ketones can also be oxidized to carboxylic acids except when ketones are oxidized, there's a reduction in the number of carbon atoms because you have to form an OH group somewhere, right? So you have to let go of some, some of the carbon state. So now you have to say very, very famous tests, Tallinn and Fairlings test. Tallinn's test is a freshly prepared ammonical silver nitrate. So, okay, so it's, uh, it's AG, NH3 twice plus, so the coordination number of this complex is 2, okay, but you'll get to know that later, uh, NO3 minus, ammonium silver nitrate, this is Tallinn's reagent. Okay, and upon addition of this, you get, uh, this basically becomes oxidized to RCO minus and reduces the silver to AG. And this is, uh, this basically is deposited the silver at the edge of the tube, test tube as a silver mirror. Now you have the next test. The next test is a very similar test. Again, it based on the same principle that the aldehyde is now oxidized to a carboxylic acid. And say, just, just because it's uh, being oxidized, something must be reduced, right? That is the, because the overall net electron transfer should be zero because of the conservation of charge. So you have CO2 plus getting reduced to CO2. This is a red, red brown precipitate. So you have pairings A and pairings B. You have to mix both the pairings, both the, both the solutions. And then uh, you should uh, keep the uh, mixture. Upon doing that, you'll get reddish brown precipitate. A very important thing to do is that aromatic aldehydes do not respond to this. Okay. So that's right. Uh, sodium potassium tartrate is called Russell, Russell salt. Okay. Uh, oxidation of uh, methyl ketones by haliform reaction. So basically, this is called uh, this is a haliform reaction. What happens is that uh, this is a very strong base. Therefore, it takes one of the this, by the these are called alpha carbon. So again, just for a small revision, this is called an alpha carbon. This is called a beta carbon. It's called a gamma carbon and so on. Because this is a function group, right? The function group is tested as like a, it's assumed like a uh, uh, location zero. So the alpha carbon atoms, uh, the hydrogens attached to them are, are acidic because this minus charge is the resonance stabilized, right? So because the base is corresponding base stabilized, the, atom, the molecule is willing to let go of the hydrogen. There's more, uh, you know, you end up with a, this, these alpha hydrogens are acidic. So the principle of halogen reaction is that all these acidic halogen hydrogens are replaced gradually with, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're, all, they're all taken away. And finally you get, you get a RCO, okay, you get a sodium salt and you get haloform. Haloform, fluoroform, bromoform, iodoform. These are all the phosphate variations. Note that uh, fluorine does not, fluorine is not uh, included in this, right? So it's a very special case. You don't have something called fluoroform. So this oxidation does not affect the carbon carbon level one is present in the molecule. So that's the thing. So these are all reactions with alpha hydrogen. These are a lot because alpha hydrogen is acidic, right? So a uh, very famous reaction with alkyl condensation. So in alkyl condensation, uh, the Carbon I don't direct negative charge and it attacks another carbon ion molecule to form a hydrogen product. This is about carboxylation. This carboxylic acid is like no depending on the number of carbon atoms, three carbon atoms, they have proof derivatives, four such a putrid derivatives, or a cathode will suffix, also every uh because you have any so that will be one, two, three, four carbon atoms. It will be beta noic acid. So, okay. You have, uh, this will be beta noic acid. And this would be two methyl beta noic acid. Okay. 
here is what I can say. Because you, this is the most preferred car algorithm. The car box you can see from the, it's always the most preferred car algorithm. So you have a more, uh, you have a substitute, inside substitute, inside process, which will be three, which is, this is just an example, by the way. Three, which is, which is, which is. So then you have, uh, you can say, you have a couple of compounds. So, the preparation of uh, preparation of uh, assets. So various methods of preparation. Now this is the this part is an explanation of the chemical reactions of carboxylic acid. Now everyone knows that how much name, right? It's an acid. So it's pH is that concerned. And it reacts with bases, basically metals, to form a carboxylate and release hydrogen. You know, that's a classical, it's a characteristic uh, property of an acid. It reacts with the base to form salt and give water. So it gives you hydrogen with metal ions. It metal with metals. It gives you water with bases. And with sodium hydrogen carbonate, also it gives you water. So again, it reacts with sodium uh, like carbonate. So that's a very interesting fact. Uh, so one must note that this is a very good uh, differentiating thing between, say, uh, uh, phenol, okay, for example, phenol, phenol does not react with NaHCl, right, whereas uh, carboxylic acid does. This shows that carboxylic acids are stronger acids than any, any phenols. So then you have uh, carboxylic acids is all water to give you a resident stabilized ion. So one, one thing to know that is one general important fact to note is from here is uh, this line is that organic acids are not very strong. Okay. So no matter how how interested you are with carboxylic acids, you remember that RCOH is nothing compared to something like HCl. These are always much, 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 much stronger than HCl. So uh, so here, keep that fact in mind. So now uh, now this is just a uh, sorry. This part is about how uh, electron neutron groups uh, stabilize the carboxylate ion because of the minus I effect. The minus I effect pulls the negative charge away, therefore stabilizing, whereas the electron donating group pushes the negative charge and increases the negative charge, therefore destabilizes the car destabilizing the carboxylate ion. So this is the acidity order. Okay, there is uh, all of this is pretty intuitive, so you just know the minus I effect order. However, there is one very Interesting deduction to be made from this uh, from this order, and uh, I just point in the doubt in a bit. Yes, it is just that. So you know that in general, a fluorine uh, has more minus I than a chlorine, right? This is true. But however, however, two chlorine atoms is more than one fluorine. That is something that you don't often see, right? But on KSL analysis, you find that this is a stronger acid than this, right? And that is the conclusion that you can make. It is a very, uh, it's something that, you know, you generally wouldn't think, think of, but that's a good fun fact to keep in mind. Even if it isn't very useful, uh, even if you never face a situation where you have to decide between the uh, minus I effects of uh, fluorine and two chlorines and one fluorine, it's a useful thing to keep in mind to just know the relative order of magnitude. You know? So, so then yeah, finally the acidification reaction, which we talked about at the very beginning of the chapter, that an acid plus an alcohol gives you an ester. Yeah, in the presence of corn hydrogen, what is the catalyst? So then you have reaction with PCF5, PCO3, SOCL2. These give you RCOCL, basically all acyl halides. And their own product. Uh, this forms carboxylic acid with NHC forms amides. So this is acid amide. This is acidic acid, right? So then similarly of benzamide and so on. Ah no, this is very interesting. Anyway, so so this is a same concept basically. You add NS3 to the COH groups to form uh halamide. But on the on strong heating, this leaves one of the uh, NH3Ds. 
and then you end up yourself with a thallium ion. So then again, you have a, a reduction reactions. You can reduce the acid to an alcohol. You can reduce the acid to just an alkene. That is called decarboxylation. De decarboxylation is the NUH plus uh, CaO. Yes. Uh, you can also write this as CaOH twice. But because you know you are already doing you are already doing the presence of water. So, so now you have uh, just because you know you are doing electrolysis of the aqueous solution, right? So because you are doing aqueous solution, you can use CaO or CaO twice. It doesn't matter. It's called Kolbe's electrolysis. So now this is called HVZ reduction, L Walhart's reduction. Uh, so basically, any halogen has red phosphorus will reduce, will basically uh, give you an the halogen in the alpha position. So it's called alpha halogenation. So now we have uh, resubstitution. So very important thing is that they do not undergo fiddle crafts reaction because carboxyl group is deactivating. So because deactivating, uh, it's not going to undergo fiddle crafts reaction, either alkylation or acylation. <laughs> So, however, it, it will have, you know, it will undergo with a reaction like con H and to just to support to give you meta nitrobenzoic acid. And bromine in the presence of FAB and 3 and to give you meta bromobenzoic acid. So, okay. So, basically, uh, so what you want to do is So, they're totally, okay, so they're totally around uh, 20 excesses, right? So, we'll do them. So, first question, what, do you, what is meant by the following term, cyanohydrin? So, we know that a cyanohydrin is just a OHCN formation, right? It's addition, addition of HCN to a aldehyde. So, that is the general, uh, uh, that is what's meant by a cyanohydrin. The, basically, the, the CN minus acts as the nucleoside. And attacks the, the delta plus of the carbon group and forms a cyanohydrin com complex in compound. As it happens, when two molecules of ROH react with a uh, carbon group, you get an acetal formation. OR, OR. So this is an acetal. Basically, one molecule, one, this RH is again actually a nucleophilic addition. This is an example. So this is an example of nucleophilic addition. This is also a nucleophilic addition. So the oxygen has a nucleophile, attacks with carbon atoms, and then you have uh, this forms of hemiacetamic in the in, as an intermediate step. It's not an intermediate, but it has one of the steps in the middle. And then it forms an acetyl after one more attack of uh, alcohol. Then you have a semi carbazone. So you have semi carbazide, right? Uh, so semi carbazide uh, upon ad addition with a carbon group will let go of its uh, and so it is a semi carbazone, right? So that is a semi carbazone. So in this case, of course, what is exactly the semi carbazone? Uh, we'll go back and refer to. So if you look at it, uh, semi carbazone, semi carbazone is this the semi carboside is this um, and it's CO and H2. Therefore the semi carbazone is uh, is an addition of ammonia and derivatives uh, to the carbon in the So that is a semi carbazone. So now uh aldol. Aldol is basically derived from an aldehyde and an alcohol. So basically it is how uh, you have an aldehyde and you have some alcohol, right? The alcohol attacks the aldehyde. And then you have a, uh, so you have, you have something like this, right? <coughs> so basically, uh, this is called a, uh, uh, this is an aldol condensation. It's a reaction. Uh, basically, uh, yeah. You have hemiacetal again, it's already explained. Uh, you have a uh, one molecule of an alcohol. An alcohol reacts with some, some sort of carbonyl group. 
to give you a uh, this delta minus attacks the carbon. So you have O minus uh, O H R plus and this height is an atom of transfers to this oxygen. It is formed O H and O R. This is the heaviest term. There is the heaviest. Now oxygen. So uh, similarly, you also have uh, this is again an ammonia derivative, just like a semiconductor. So, ketone. We've just covered. Uh, we've covered, covered in acetone, right? The ketone is a small thing. It's with a ketone. So this is an ethylene glycol ketone. Ketone. So that's a ketone. An example of a ketone. Imine, another ammonia derivative. 2,4 DNP there. What is 2,4 DNP? I think we already covered this in the test, right? 2,4 DNP is 2,4 dinitrosinyl hydrogen. And if you add that to the carbonyl uh, group, you get 2,4 di dinitrosinyl hydrogen. So that is the product form. That's an important test in all that. Shift base. Is another uh, useful test for uh, uh, I'm not exactly sure what it remains for. I think uh, um, you could try to recall. Yes, I think uh, I think it's used to react with uh, uh, aliphatic or aromatic amines to form schist bases. Schist bases are a class of compounds. Basically, you have a R group. Double bond in R dash, so that is a uh, that is the uh, uh, basis. Okay, name the following compounds according to IUPAC nomenclature. So first we look at again this is IUPAC nomenclature. So we just go through go through it step by step. Okay, first one. So let's look at the largest chain. Uh, first we are, we always have to start counting from the, from the Function will do. Function groups are given priority if there are no other functional groups. One, two, three, four, five. You see that there's a CH3 in the fourth position. Therefore, as this is four, the, the substitute element here is methyl. And there is five carbon atoms. So, pen. It's an early head group, so it's pentanol. So, four methyl pentanol is the answer to question. So now question two. Now you have two functional groups, a halogen and then a uh, keto. Here uh, we, we look at the order of the priority of functional groups, and we conclude that a ketone has more priority than a halogen. Therefore, uh, priority is given such that the lower number should go to the carbon of the keto. So we start with one, two, three, four. Five and six. So we have hex, right? So let us see. Uh, let us see where the substituent is. So you have chlorine in six position. So that's six chloro. And the fourth position you have methyl, four ethyl, right? Then uh, you have uh, hex. So it's six carbonates. So hex and one because it's a ketone, right? So because it's a ketone, hex and one. So that is the answer to the second question. Now for the, on to the third question. One, two, three, four. Of course, this is not the right order. You always give preference the functional group. So you have one, two, three, four. So it is clearly it's but There are no substituents. So the compound starts with but butyl. Uh, but at the second position, you have an in, right? Butte to in. Remember, you would have just written butte to in if it, had, it didn't have any CHO group, right? However, because it's an early head group, cut off one of the E's. You cut off one of the E's and you write butte to in one, one. Oh, sorry, uh, my bad, my bad. I did so butte to in one L. So, so this is the answer to the third question. Now, the fourth question, again, we have two uh, 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 ketone groups. Let's see, 
the first thing to do in any IUPAC nomenclature is to identify all the functional groups and then identify all the substituents. So then you find the longest chain. The longest chain is the basis of the nomenclature, right? It is what the compound is named after. Uh, so that's something that you should definitely look out for first. And the order of numbering comes slightly later. It comes uh, where you have to decide uh, the priorities with the functional groups. Once you decide that, you have to look at the alphabetical order of the substituents. For example, remember we had a, we had three chloro five uh, sorry six chloro uh, four ethyl, right? I didn't I didn't write four ethyl six chloro. That will be wrong. Uh, six chloro. That will, this is wrong because uh, the chloro comes before C comes before E, right? In alphabetical order. So the only correct way to write this six chloro four ethyl, even though. 4 is just a 6 that has no bearing on the IUPAC. Okay, now you have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, for the symmetric molecules, you're not going to worry about uh, 5 atoms, 2 uh, groups. So, yeah, it's 10, 10. Uh, where are all the uh, ketones? 2, comma, 4, dione. Because there are 2 ketone groups, so it's 10, 10, 2, 4, dione. Okay, now you have. Uh, the fifth one, fifth one, you look at it a bit more careful, and then you see where it is. You look at the first in the group, the one, two, three, four, five, and six. And you see where all the substituents are. So the substituent at three, there are two substituents at three, and one substituent at five. Right? So three, three, five are all substituents. Try methyl. The three methyl groups in total. Three, three, five times so try methyl. Xl for the uh, ketone groups like two. So you write Xl2. Okay, so that is the answer for the sixth question. Now you have the sixth question. The sixth question is basically again a carboxylic acid. Priority always goes to the carboxylic acid. So one, two. Oh, sorry. One, two, three, and four. Basically, what what happens is this is COI. I'm just drawing the compound now. CH two, C, CH three, CH three, and CH three. So the longest chain is one, two, three, and four. And substituents are there are two substituents of the CH three persons. So it is basically three three dimethyl, right? 3, 3, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, Whereas non terminal groups are things like uh, CO, there is a ketone group, right? So all of these are uh, non -term. Okay, now the last one, 17. C6 is 4. So the moment you see something like that, you know that it's probably a ring, right? So you draw the benzene ring. And you know that's a CHO, so you have to draw the CHO. And para OH, which means para hydroxy. Right? Oh, sorry, C. So, I think that's the H, So, it's CH. Okay. So, how do you name this? Well, uh, you know that this, the actual name for this is not, uh, it's not acetaldehyde. Okay, acetaldehyde is just a, a common name. Actual name of this is benzene carbaldehyde. So, that is, it's benzene carbaldehyde. Okay. In this case, we have two such car, 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 uh, carbon atoms, so it is dicarbonate. But where are the carbon atoms? Where are the CHOs? 1, 4. So that's what the answer is in this context. It is benzene 1, 4, dicarbonate. Okay, benzene 1, 4, dicarbonate. Okay, now let us ask to draw the structure for the following compounds. 3 methyl butanol. So butanol is like that. So what I mean when I say this kind of structure, there is a carbon atom at every corner, okay? 
that is how instead of drawing that which takes a lot of time i just draw that both and both mean the same thing this is but this is butane butane if it has to be butanol i have to add a ch over here now it is butanol three methyl so there will be one two and three so the methyl group is that this is three methyl butanol para nitro propiocene so okay so if it has to be uh, para nitro propiocene basically what is the propiocene you draw the benzene ring right it has to be a propane chain and then a c double bond only right that is propiocene what is para nitro propiocene this is a nitro group at the para group so this is the answer is what the uh, para nitro propiocene so you might you might ask okay why why is the uh, aldehyde group not here right that's a good question the answer is that you have you have some you have the you have specifically mentioned propiocene phenone what is phenone mean that means that the aldehyde the ketone sorry should be very close to the uh, phenyl group this means it has to be that this is phenone essentially the propane part comes right next to it okay next para methyl benzaldehyde so benzaldehyde is is that right para methyl so methyl is here. so that is that next you have Four methyl pentene to one pent. So you draw five atoms. That is pentane. Pent two O one. So you draw a carbonyl group at the second position. Three ene, which means at the third position there should be a double bond. But you know that you give higher priority to this, right? So you start counting like that. So if that if there is a double bond at the third position, the double bond has to be like that. It has to be between the third and the fourth carbonyl. So it cannot be between the second and third. Because you specify the the number that is lower uh, of the carbon atoms, which are connected to the double bond. So between three and four, three is the lower number, right? So you specify three. So uh, apart from this, you also have four methyl. So you have to draw methyl substituent, right? So that is the entire concept. Okay. So then you have uh, what is ah? Okay, clear us some space, you know. Okay. So we are now we are the fifth, right? Four chloro pentane two one. So this is draw the pentane structure. Pentane two one. So again, draw the carboxylic acid there. Four chloro. One, two, three, four. That's it. So that is how we draw four chloro pentane. Then you have uh, three bromo four phenyl pentanoic acid. So pentanoic acid, pent, pent, right? One, two, three, four, five. Pentanoic acid, COOH. So this is, this is pentanoic acid. Three bromo, one, two, three. Three bromo pentanoic acid. Three bromo, four phenyl, one, two, three, four. Four phenyl. Four phenyl. So this will be the second. Next, seven. Para para dihydroxy benzophenone. So what is phenone? Phen. Benzophen. First of all, what is benzophenol? This is benzene. This is phenol. This is benzophenol. Right? Now you have para para dash. P dash means just the para and other other benzene. Now hydroxy. So both are hydroxy. Okay, so that's an important compound. X to means four ionic acids. X. So six carbon atoms. So you draw six carbon atoms. There you are, two in. So first, you draw the hex in the right hand. Okay, just to because you know that once you draw the salt group, they are already set. This means the other substituents can be drawn with ease. You exactly know where the reserve location is. So you have to use the C O H here. This is the one, two. And then in the second position, you have a double bond. Three, four. At the fourth position, you have a triple bond. A triple bond is represented like that. Except if you have a triple bond. So that's a double bond, right? That's three. That is four. So once you have a triple bond, sorry, my bad. You have to draw it like this because uh, the, the, the triple bond, all the both these carbon atoms are sp hybridized, right? And sp hybridized carbon atoms are linear. 
So the, they have to be represented in a linear manner. So this is the exact representation of the column. So next, write the IUPAC names for following three those scenario heads. Whenever possible, wherever possible, give common names too. So first, IUPAC name. What is the IUPAC name? I think it's easy to see. This is clearly. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven carbon atoms and the CO at the second position. So it is hep, hep 10, 2, 1. Right? So does not seem to have very well known, well, well known names. They take it out, right? Similarly, here we have just the function with group. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So yeah, it should be some sort of hexanal, right? It should be a hexanal. But what kind? There was a metal substituent there. So bromine and there is a chlorine. That's it. So it should be uh, two methyl and four bromine, right? Okay, yeah, but wait a minute. You can't just you can't write it like this because methyl begins with an M, bromine begins with a B, and B always comes before M in the alphabet plant, right? So we should write four bromo. 2 methyl hexanal. That is the name of the compound. So 4 bromo 2 methyl hexanal. Okay, next. Uh, so 1, 2, 3. So 1 plus 5 plus 1, 6. Again, 6 carbon atoms. This is clearly uh, 7. Guess what? This is 79. Again, they ask for the okay, common names. We'll come back to again later. Uh, this is a very common. This is actually a very popular compound. So I think I uh, right. This is a very popular compound. Uh, it's actually called uh, cinnamaldehyde. So okay. So we'll but we'll come back to we'll, we'll come back uh, later when we're doing adjustment of the hard reactions. Um, anyway, um, so the IUPAC name, so you get the main chain. The main chain will be the straight carbon chain. So the carbon chain will have, uh, uh, it, has it has a function of one, two, three, right? So basically, uh, it is 3-phenyl, 3-phenyl, group 2 in one hour. Okay, and then next we have this. This is a very simple name. The main chain is cyclopentane. So it is a carbaldehyde. Cyclopentane carbaldehyde is the name of that compound. PH, COPH. Uh, so you have here you have the main chain is that carbon atom. So you have um, one one diphenyl. Basically, it's two phenyl substituents at the first position, right? Or the much, much more common name that is used for this is uh, benzophenone. That, that is a common name. Okay, so again, coming back to this, the common name of uh, PHC double bond, C double bond, CHCHO, it is, uh, it's called uh, cinnamaldehyde. Okay, now draw structure with the following derivatives. The 2, 4 dinitrosinyl derivative of benzaldehyde. 2, 4 dinitrosinyl hydrazone. So the 2, 4 dinitrosinyl uh, hydrazine. So 2, 4 dinitrosinyl hydrazine. NH, NH2. This is 2, 4 DNP. Plus benzaldehyde. So you have the nitrogen electrons attacking, right? And, but we but we already know the process, right? There's no need to do the mechanism all over again. As it's going to be C double bond N bond NH sorry N uh, NH phenyl NO2 NO2. That is the structure of, that is the structure of, uh, 
two four dinators main hydrogen. Okay. Now cyclopropylene oxide. So what is an oxide? So let's just let's detail this. So an oxide is so here. Write down what an oxide is. So we want a cyclopropylene oxide, right? Cyclopropylene is attached to the C double bond in OH. That's that is cyclopropylene oxide. Now acetaldehyde dimethyl acetal. So acetaldehyde dimethyl acetal. Uh, uh, Wait a minute, I think I think I will stay here. Yeah, uh, that should be the so cyclopropylene oxide. Yeah, otherwise it's an extra carbon atom, so it wouldn't be this. So this is cyclopropylene oxide. So then you have uh, uh, acet acetaldehyde dimethyl acetal. So first you need a uh, acetaldehyde. First, what is acetaldehyde? Is PL2. So you want an acetal acetal. Uh, you get the di di dimethyl acetal. We need to react it with CH3OH twice to form CH3 CH OCH3 OCH3. That's an that, that's an acid. And that is what we want. You need a semi carbon or cyclobutanone. So what is a semi carbon I think we have already found out that it is NH CL1 to NH2. With an NH2 here, but that is basically C double bond uh, in attached to the the, uh, the compound of interest rate. Right? In this case, we use cyclobutanone. So that is for this. So that next you have ethylene ketal of hexanone. So you have hexan 3 one okay? So if you draw hexan 3 one it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Xm three O and ethylene Ethylene ketal formation is simply as detailed uh, previously. It is the formation of an oxygen and oxygen CH two CH two. So that is the ethylene ketal formation. It's actually very easy to see now, but it's already given the textbook. So I'm going to go through it again. Then you have the system. The methyl hemiacetal of formaldehyde. So, formaldehyde is a common name for HCH2. So, if you want the methyl hemiacetal, you just need to use one molecule of CH3OH, delta minus, this attacks the delta plus, and you finally get HCOCH3OH and H. So that is that. Okay. Ready the products in cyclohexane carbaldehyde reacts with the following reagents. Phenyl Rillard reagent, phenyl magnesium bromide and the acidification, tolerance reagent, uh, and so on. Okay, right? So semi carbaldehyde and reagents. So cyclohexane carbaldehyde, we know that that's basically a cyclohexane. And the CH2. And this reacts with the pH MgBr. You know that when carbon compounds react with the brilliant reason, it turns into a ether. You get a uh, OH, right? So you have a cyclohexane ring. Let's call it cyclohexane ring by, let it denote the cyclohexane ring by CH. Right? And this, or no, the cyclohexane. Yeah. Because it becomes too tiresome to write the word. I'm just going to call this CH C H O H P H. It's a phenyl here and that's the cyclohexane. Tolerance rate. You know the tolerance rate is a single mode or oxidation to alcohol. So acid rate. So your problem would be CH C A. You know, so it is CH and CH2. Okay. So now you have the reaction. 
So we have carbazide plus weak acid. Then we have acyl ethanol uh, plus acid. So cyclohexylene carbide plus uh, two excess of ethanol gives you acetal. Right? So that will so this is CH, CH, and two molecules of OC2H. Those OC2H. So in this zinc amount of dimension, you have this clemency reduction, right? Because it's clemency, your final product is going to be uh, CH, uh, CH, uh, CH3. It reduces CHO to a CH3 alkene. So we have the 8.7. Which is, which is the following compounds with under condensation, which which are the which are the ones that are cancelled and which neither, right? Under condensation is something which has a uh, 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 alpha hydrogens. I think I'll write expected product from one. After which I think it should become very obvious the right for that ones. So. Let's look at that. Let's look at the case uh, with uh, methanol. Okay. Methanol is CH3CHO. So, let's here also space this whole thing. So, look at that. Let's look at other conditions. Let's look at methanol. Methanol is CH3CHO. Upon adding dilute in the OH, it uh, it basically uh, so basically, methanol. So dilute NaOH takes a negative charge from the CH3 group. Now you have another CH3 uh, double bond to H CH3 here. Okay. So now, so now, uh, uh, so. This is going to attack the delta plus of the uh, carbon atom. So that, that's going to go there. And you're end up going to, you're going to end up with a C O minus H C H3 C H2 C H3 H three. So basically you the adult product. Okay. I mean, of course, you need the after acidification, you get a hydrogen. Okay. This is an aldal product. So, because it's an aldehyde and an alcohol. Okay. So that is the definition of an aldal. So, I think after this, it's, it's not basically simple. Just if, if the compound shall write the algorithm for uh, finishing similar problems. Okay. If you ever want to solve, uh, if you want to find out what the aldal product could be, then Take the product, find its alpha, take its alpha hydrogen. Since that has to be acidified, it should attack the other uh, uh, other carbon and electrophilic center. So it should be it should be like that. The final part is going to be like that. So it's because it's, it's because it's uh, negative charge attacking the delta, and that's what happens. So if it doesn't have any attraction, then naturally it uh, undergoes penicillin. So out of these, what are what undergo what which which proper undergoes aldal penicillin? It is methanol. It is two methyl pentanol. Two methyl pentanol looks like two methyl pentanol. So again, it has an alkyl so so that undergoes and it's going to tick all those seven. Uh, oh, methanol. My bad. My bad. Methanol doesn't work because I thought that I think this I thought this methanol. Methanol is only C H two O. Okay. In other words, H C H O. Methanol is formed here, so it doesn't undergo aldal transition. The example I gave was for methanol. Uh, so two methyl methanol and all those um, aldal transition. I can have similar undergoes. Because it has an alpha hydrogen. 
one final copy node and reverse final condition. Then final as well here because thing else. Okay, so these ticked ones undergo add on condition. And the structures you know, are easily predicted from the other sheet. So whatever does not, which all components do not contain requirements, undergo kinesaldehyde. So that would be a methanol, a benzaldehyde, uh, uh, benzaldehyde, 2 dimethyl, 2 dimethyl butanol. If you look at butanol, butanol is not even a carbonyl compound, so it undergoes neither of these reactions. Whereas benzophenone uh, is a ketone ha having no alpha hydrogen, so, uh, but it doesn't undergo either aldol or, or kinesal reaction. Because the, the common yes, there's not T hydrogen. So now you have, now you have question, how will you convert ethanol into the following things? So, you can convert ethanol into butane. Okay, you can convert ethanol into a butane with ethanol. So, any conversion problem can be approached by looking at the final product and wondering what possible steps that one can take to achieve from the initial starting point to the final product. So, in this case, uh, we have uh, butane, one, three, dion, right? And we're starting with SNL. Sorry, SNL. Right? So, one, one, something one can do is uh, add our condition. Alder condition, you know, because if you want an OH, right? Alder condition will actually give you an alcohol here. So think about the number of carbon atoms is doubling, right? So HNR has two carbon atoms, whereas butane one three dior has four carbon. So you are doubling the carbon. So you look at all the reactions which double the carbon, the double the number of carbon atoms, and try to uh, figure out the reaction accordingly. So in this context, uh, you have this uh, product being formed, but you know that you need to form this product. So what steps can you uh, take to do that? Then you need to do a reduction process because you need to add a hydrogen here, right? This is a double bond now. You want to make it a bit. So you need to reduce. So now you think about all the possible reducing items you can do this. And you find that NABH over is a reduces carbon. That's what you can do. Butenal. Again, if the structure, the broad structure of butenal, it is like that. Again, you think about the number of carbons being doubled, so you try to do aldol transition. The aldol product will give you that, as discussed before. If you want to form this, you know that you just have to heat. That's so again, I think that's something that's already given in the, uh, in the uh, textbook. You need to heat and add water. The OH group will be and it's basically elimination. Uh, the water one is eliminated leaves and then you can double look. So dehydration reaction. Next you have but but to in oil castle. Again, once again it's a similar uh, thing. You have uh, CHO here, right? From the last last thing. You want to convert it to a but you want to convert it to a carboxylic acid, right? So you try to try to look for oxidizing. One possible oxidizing agent is uh, why not use Torm's agent as well? AG plus. That's going to make the CH CHO as CO one like this. Add water or add H3O plus an acidic medium is going to become uh, butyenoic acid as the process. Right structural formulas and names of the four possible aldol condensation products from propanol and butanol. 
series cases which indicate childhood acid neutrophils and resistance of protein. So the fact that you know why why should there be more phosphate products? Well, if you look at propanol and propanol, I call propanol as P, okay, and butanol as B. Okay. So here you can have the arnold condensation between propanol and propanol. Or you can have it with butanol plus butanol. You can have it propanol plus butanol. Or you can have it as butanol plus propanol. Right? All of these four combinations exist. Four combinations exist. Uh, why are these two different? Why are they not the same? It's because one of one of these is going to act as a nucleophile. And one of these is going to act as an electrophile, right? So uh, that is the difference essentially. One of these compounds is going to act as a double bond or delta plus one, which is going to get attacked. One of these is going to act as the attacker. This is the whose alpha hydrogen is removed by the base. So that's why these two are different combinations. In each, uh, the special problem is easy to address. As already discussed, propanol, um, propanol looks like that CHO. So its alcohol consumption product is going to look like um, OH. So you need to, so basically, it's a negative charge, and again, Right, uh, so that's how it is. Basically, I mean, you have uh, you have a you have a hydrogen here. Yeah, so this is the alcohol condensation product. Maybe it's propanol and propanol. So we have this possibility of butanol and butanol. Right, butanol and butanol will be like that. That you get a negative charge because of the base attack the CHO. The CHO becomes COHH instead, and then we have a bond here. Right, so this is the alcohol. So this is the concept of the hydrogen product. And similarly, you know, uh, if you have the cross product, I'll just tell you one cross product that is uh, butanol, that is propanol. You get a negative charge, you attack the delta plus. Um, this thing becomes um, so you get a you get a you get you get a bond here and C O H and H. So that is the cross product. Other cross product is when you know that other one attacks them, uh, when propanol attacks them, attacks bitten up. Now now you have uh, an organic compound with uh, some molecular formula forms a 2 for DNP derivative. It also uh, reduces carbon reaction and undergoes cancer reaction. Yes. Uh, so, so, basically, uh, Uh, so if an underpass, so look at the structural formula, it's because of the number of hydrogen atoms are almost equal number of carbon atoms, you know it's a ring structure. You can conclude, you can guess that it's a ring structure. So you assume it's a ring structure, draw the benzene ring. It has to be uh, it reaches tolerance region. That means it should be a carbon compound. Right? So if you have a CHO somewhere. Here now, so seven carbon atoms have been accounted for. What about other two? So let us just say, uh, so you know that you should you, on vigorous oxidation, you should benzene one to two dicarboxylic acid. And you know, in vigorous oxidation, it doesn't matter where carbon atoms are, all of them become COH. The fact that it's, it's only a dicarboxylic acid means that uh, all both the carbon atoms have to be in one more structure, something like this. C2H5. Why should there be adjacent? Because one, two benzene dicarboxylic acid. 
So the part that two other spaces forms and the adjacent rules. So this could be a product. So uh, is there any other possibility of another compound like this? Well, it uh, so uh, it reduces trans region. So since it undergoes trans other reaction, it has to be a it should not contain any alpha ions. So therefore, the CHO must be stuck to the benzene. This is not a possible alternate. CH2, CHO, and CH3. That is not possible because this is alpha ion. It would have, it would have undergone aldol condition. Note that aldol condition is always more preferred than canisar. Canisar only occurs when uh, there are no uh, uh, then there are no alpha ions and it, it has. Therefore, the reaction of the base will only take through the path of trans. See, that's because the rate determining step of trans reaction is the trans of the hydride ion, right? which is not a particularly favorable step. So that's the cancer reaction, not as favorable in a parallel condition. However, it will occur you know, if there is a trans of base and there is no alpha hydride. In organic compound, uh, was hydrolyzed with dilute explosive support to give you carboxylic acid uh, and an alcohol. Oxidation uh, with chromic acid produced in B or C with chromic acid produced B. C on dehydration uh, reduces you blue to iron. So let us try to let us try to see. A, so A, when A is hydrolyzed, it gives you carboxylic acid and alcohol. That all automatically tells you that A has to be a Right, A is an ester because only an ester on hydrolysis gives you a carboxylic acid and the alcohol. And you know that uh, the oxidation of C with chromic acid produces B. You now C is an alcohol. If, it, if, if the oxidation of with chromic acid produces B, you know that the alcohol has to be a primary alcohol, right? Because the number of carbon atoms is the same. So that is carbon atoms are not lost. So that has to be the case. So now, now next, next. Oxid C on dehydration gives you beer 20 again. So that's why uh, C has to be something like 1, 2, 3, 4. And it's an alcohol, right? So it has to be like this. Uh, because on vigorous oxidation, it cannot lose any carbon atoms, right? It has, it has to, it will give you back C. It will give you, it'll give you B. So now on vigorous oxidation, you know that that will give you COOH. That's that is B. So that's what is A. Four carbon atoms, C, O, O, and then four carbon. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Yes, so that is A. So I hope you understood. Basically, uh, you, you started with the claim that the ester is A, that A is an ester. That is because it's on hydrolysis, it gives you a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. And then once you find out that uh, C on C it is an alcohol, the oxygen alcohol gives you an acid, which is B basically. That means that. Uh, uh, since, since the oxidation uh, leads uh, to no loss of C, since C and D are just this will prove one here, C contains four carbon atoms, right? It's a four carbon atom. If, 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 it, was, uh, if it was a secondary alcohol, something like that, then on vigorous oxidation, it would have only produced propane, propanoic acid. It would have, this would have been cut off. So then the overall, then you know that the uh, C and B together gives, gives you A, right? It's an ester, right? But uh, here you have only three carbon atoms in acid and four carbon atoms in alcohol. But four plus three is only seven. But you need eight carbons because the structure formula contains C8, H16. So this is not possible, which means this alcohol must be primary. Only if this alcohol is primary, then you will get four carbon atom carboxylic acid. Then four plus four carbon atom should be eight carbon atom. This finally makes sense with the, with the molecular carbon of the ester.
So you can find out the, the structure of the alcohol, right? Therefore, you can find out the structure of acid because it's just bigger uh, oxidation of the alcohol. So therefore, you can find the structure of the ester. That is the way you solve. The twelfth one. Arrange the following uh, in the increasing order of the property indicated. You have uh, you have to look at uh, uh, the decrease in plus i effect of the alkyl group, and uh, if you consider the steric hindrance as well. If you want to look at it, it has been as a uh, nucleophile, right? So in this process, if you look at uh, uh, in the attack of carbon group, the rate of reaction is determined by how electrophilic sent the center is, right? So that is determined by both health factor as well as electronic factors. So you know that diet as you tell ketones very, very spherical in there, right? So that is going to be four. So I just write the numbers of that. So that is going to be the least. So this so actually this one. Because of the least reactive. Then we have uh, methyl tertiary group, that is the next thing, term for the kinetons. That is two. Then with other two, you have acetone, acetone. Well, you know the ketones are less reactive than aldehydes. So that is three, and then that is four. Then you have uh, acid strength. You know, acid strength is again characterized by plus three group, right? The plus i of isopropyl is uh, greater than the plus i of uh, n-propyl. That's because the carbon atom is closer to the COH. Similarly, if you have a bromine atom, you have minus, and that minus is stronger. So this is the clearly the least acidic. You know the electron withdrawing groups stabilize acid because they stabilize the anion, right? Reduced when the acid is dissolved in water. So this is one least least strong acid. This is two, then this is three, and this is four. Why is between three and how did I decide? That's because the bromine atom is closer in four. So the minus i effect is stronger in four. Therefore, it's more electron withdrawing, therefore it is stable. Now for the third one, benzoic acid, nitrobenzoic acid, three, four dimetro and four methoxy. Benzoic acid, acid strength. So let's see. Clearly, again, we look at the electron uh, donating and withdrawing group. Out of these, only methoxy group is uh, electron donating. That's because it's, it's donating through plus R effect. So sadly, so therefore, it's the worst acid because it has a lot, lot so electron donating group. That is one. So then you have benzoic acid, which does not have any functional group to make it an electron donating group. Well, benzene ring by itself is an electron neutral group, but I'm just saying in, in comparison, because everything has a benzene ring, I'm not talking qualitatively about that, that nature. We have nitrobenzoic acid, and we have three, four diameter. So if you have three, four diameter, it's two, nitro, two nitro groups, so that's more EWC, more veteran group. So that should be three, and that should be four. Use simple chemical tests to distinguish between the following pairs of compounds propanol and propanol. So, when well, we look at the ketones and anhydrides, there are a few characteristic tests to differentiate. Uh, but the very important and simple test is iodoform reaction. Aldehydes give iodoform, but ketones do not. So, iodoform reaction is something that can uh, distinguish. Acetophenone and benzophenone. Acetophenone again is an uh, aromatic. Um, uh, acetophenone is a phenyl group with C double bond and that. Whereas benzophenone is that. So, uh, Acetophenone and benzophenone can also be distinguished by iodoform test because, uh, sorry, my bad, my bad. Ketones can be, sorry, I don't know what it's uh, This is wrong. What is the value of wrong? Iod uh, iodoform test is given by those which have alpha hydrogens. 
So this looks like that. This death spiral. Uh, this looks like uh, this is here. Once we have uh, and uh, CX zero CX zero group. So if you have a methyl ketone group, okay. So that is the true characteristic of an iodoform reaction. Uh, iodoform reaction differentiate two uh, compounds which have a methyl ketone and those with the dose which do not. So you have this as a methyl ketone group. So that is used to distinguish. Uh, and we know that uh, PR and benzoic acid can be distinguished by FEC of the test. Neutral ferric chloride is a characteristic test of all phenols. You see a wild coloration with compound com complex formation with, with the iron. Whereas um, benzoic acid is an acid, as well as not be Now benzoic acid is methyl benzoic. Well, you know that ethane benzoic is an acid, right? Benzoic acid is an acid. The thing with an acid is that it has two acid, right? So you can think about think of just differentiating acid and then on acid. So if you look at that, it on reaction with let's say uh, base and it hits you okay? This is sodium base. Okay, and that releases this different acid. So you have like uh, benzoic acid, right? C six H I C O O H. If you add any HCO3, you get sodium benzoate, C6H5, COOA, uh, with the elevation of water and carbon dioxide. Now, this carbon dioxide is something that you can actually measure, and uh, as opposed to the ester, which does not give you any CO2 formation. Now, uh, pentanone and penten pentatuone and pentatrione. Again, pentatuone has a methyl ketone group, so I had a form this. Right? Benzaldehyde is acetophenone. Benzaldehyde and acetophenone. Again, you can distinguish this by I had a form this. Because uh, it's a different uh, methyl ketone. It's gonna, uh, you can also use sodium bicarbonate in the NHSO3 because this also will give you the differentiating nature of uh, aldehydes and ketones. Then you can use between ethanol and propanol. Well, again, ethanol and propanol can again be distinguished by iodoform test because ethanol again has some uh, methyl ketones, whereas propanol does not. Okay, so now we have the 14 question. How will you prepare the fallen compounds from benzene? You may use any inorganic reagent and any organic reagent having not more than one carbon atom. So, okay, so there you go. So, you, have, uh, you want to prepare methyl benzene. So, let's look at what kind of carbon that is. So, benzoate, methyl benzene. Phenyl, C, double bond, OCH3. Right, uh, that is that's what you need to call. And we need to we need to have some sort of a starting point. We need our starting point is given as benzene. Right? So benzene is that. So let so we want to uh, there are multiple ways of doing this, right? Uh, first thing is probably to uh, you know, to create, try to create a Grignard reagent. So let us say we add uh, uh, Groven. Uh, 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 okay. Um, and is it interesting thing we can do is so maybe we can try a little craft reaction, right? CH3Cl in anhydrous alc 3 Okay. That will give you uh, toluene. Now use the vigorous oxidation. So that gives you benzoic acid. 
and then uh, then upon uh, so then uh, we just need to add as is three on it and add water and that 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 is basically as three so we can solve it that so basically try to think of what I can do to benzene to try to get to methyl benzene right? Uh, this is one possible part. There are multiple possible answers. Uh, another possible answer is we can think of is probably brominate, yeah, Bro Br2 Fe, Fe Br3. Then you will end up with a bromine. You now you can try to use, you can try to make a Grignard reagent, right? Mg try try it. That form MgBr, and then maybe use CO2. Right, if you attack it with CO2, you will get carboxylic acid. And then with the carboxylic acid, you add CH3OH and you get it. But again, it's a slightly more complicated process. I think this answer is a simpler one. Okay. Uh, how do you put that meta nitrobenzoic acid? So, well, uh, we already prepared benzoic acid in the previous example. So just add con uh, H H N O three H two O four. Anyway, anyway, that's meta plus meta addition. So that will give you meta nitrogen. Para nitrogen. Now that's an interesting question. That we will not get by doing this because in nature of nature part only in meta. So how about when you know uh, when you had a little class reaction, you have toluene, right? When you have toluene, if you do the nitration. Then you get para, then you convert it to uh, oxidation. Uh, right? Then it's possible to oxidize. Maybe so to form uh, para. Then you have phenyl acetic acid. Phenyl acetic acid, again, uh, you can just draw the structure of phenyl acetic acid. So the structure of phenyl acetic acid will be a phenyl group. Phenyl group I'm representing with a symbol phi. Uh, CH, CH2COOH. Right? And let's see where this comes from. Well, when you look at processes, it's increased the number of carbon, right? And if it is really just know these kind of various processes in your uh, mind while they're attempting such questions. Then these this kind of pressure could very simple. They become very simple because you already know what what kind of steps to perform to get what you want. So once you know that the minor details are you know uh, kind of irrelevant, they they are important for rigor, but uh, these are the ones which will really guide you to be able to solve them. And I think that is what is uh, so. So this is vanilla aspect, okay. So one of the uh, one of the uh, ways to increase the number of carbon atoms is uh, hydro, you know, cyanohydrin forms, right? You might have seen, right? Uh, so. You can form uh, methyl benzoate, right? We have, I think we have done methyl benzoate, right? So, to methyl benzoate, uh, how about non methyl benzoate? So, let us say to uh, uh, benzyl help. We have benzoic acid, let's reduce the benzoic acid. So, we will get a, a benzyl help. If you add HCM, we will get. CHOH CN, right? Now we know that on hydrolysis, hydrolysis this will give you uh, CHOH COH. And you know, you now you can just do dehydration, con h 2 That will give you the product. Because con h 2 will simply dehydrate the alcohol. And you will be left over with. 
ethanol right now now just simply use the dilute nios dilute nios will do alcohol so alcohol reaction will be the product now uh, after this one benzene to meta nitro acetophy so first we'll draw our meta nitro acetophy in one area So again, so we get if you want to minimize, so we only need to use two steps, right? We want to minimize one of the steps, and we need to have a large alkyl, basically acyl group, right? So the best way to do that is spread it as acylation. So add CS three COCl in terms of one hydrogen CS three, and you get. Phenyl CO-CH3. Now, at this point, uh, luckily we know that the CO-CH3 group is anyway a meta-directing group. So, simple nitration with HNO3, H2 support on HNO3, this on H2 support will give a meta meta-nitro acetophene. Now. Now you have benzaldehyde to benzocene. So you have benzaldehyde, which is 
that right and your final product required is benzosphenol which is that right so let us see how we might achieve this so first step to notice is that we are converting the tend converter uh i'll head to the heat right so maybe a good idea to do this would be to okay so a good thing to do here in this case would be to oxidize if you uh, strong oxidizer you can get to cf3 so in cs3 you will get to twice cf and on distilling the ca calcium goes away and then you are left with benzophene so now you have raw bromo benzene to one phenyl ethanol so you have bromo benzene to one phenyl ethanol so it's an all this like that one phenyl is not so that's that is a phenyl product this is bromo benzene so you need to have a again you need to try and uh, you need to try and create an alkyl group where it's a bromo so a good step would be to use uh, 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 this grignard uh, reaction so magnesium we will use a phenyl magnesium bromide and then a simple uh, nucleophilic substitution will uh, do the trick use the cs3 cho and then as this so that will So that's the thing. Oh wait, uh, I, I think I made a mistake. Uh, one phenyl ethanol. So that should be the one. Yeah. So then you have uh, benzene to three phenyl propen ethanols. Uh, three phenyl propen ethanols. So propen one all, three phenyl. That is the compound. Right. So now you're trying to uh, that now you have benzene here already, right? We have CHO. So you need to increase the carbon chain, right? So a good way to do this is uh, aldol condensation. You know that aldol condensation will uh, give you uh, uh, will give you will give you uh, you know after heating aldol condensation will give you. So pH, pH, double bond, CH, double bond, bond CH, which is the same idea. And then upon uh, treatment with H2 and I with nickel, which is reducing the compound, will give you the desired compound. The next one is benzaldehyde to alpha hydroxy sinaldehyde acid. So again, we have benzaldehyde here. to alpha hydroxy phenyl acetic acid so phenyl acetic acid goes like that alpha hydroxy is this so how would you attempt such a thing you are trying to with um, um, whenever you think of an acid think about cyanide okay So, because finally, the hydrolysis can be an acid. So here is your succin, right? So that will um, that will be a cyanohydrin formation. And after this, we have cyanohydrin nucleate. That in the point hydrolysis, it will give you the product. Then the final last product. And now it is going to be uh, benzoic acid, pH CHO with POOH, POOH to uh, nitro benzyl alcohol. Again, it's important to know how these names are uh, uh, structurally drawn. Then why benzyl alcohol? 
so uh, we will need to as first use associate to to convert the coh to um, sort of after the so we will use uh, say yes so in the case we see the bcl virus and so we can use any of those to carry out the process now um this is the following acetylation acetylation is basically from its name it's uh, easy to follow it is basically the introduction of an acetyl group so it's a introduction of acetyl group um, so basically uh, basically uh, it is usually carried out in the presence of some base so Uh, you end up with uh, so yeah so you end up yeah so this is it substitutes the uh, it substitutes the acid chloride into the uh, uh, hydrogen in presence of an active hydrogen so then you have Kanazawa uh, reaction Kanazawa reaction is uh, the reaction that aldehydes undergo when they Don't have an active hydrogen, active alpha hydrogen atom. So when they're treated as a base, rather what happens is that they undergo this proportionation, which is self oxidation and self reduction. One molecule is therefore oxidized to an acid, and the other one is reduced to an alcohol. So this is called Kanazawa reaction. Cross alcohol condensation is basically what happens when two different products are mixed and a base is introduced. So if both the both the aldehyde both the you know, uh, carbonyl compounds which contain alpha hydrogen atoms exit in solution, then the base may attack either one, right? And so if it attacks, let's say the first the, comp the compound A, then that negative charge can attack the can can behave like a nucleophile and attack the electrophilic center electrophilic carbon center and the other. Uh, carbonyl compound, whereas it could happen vice versa as well, right? Uh, the base could remove the alpha hydrogen of the second compound, and this co compound can can act as a nucleophile and attack the electrophilic center of the first compound. These two will be two different products, and since this compound isn't interacting, since this compound isn't undergoing aldol condensation with itself. I mean, self-aldol condensation can also occur in such cases, as we have already seen in the example problem. But these kind of uh, self-aldol condensation, where the condensation is happening between two different species, uh, is called cross-aldol condensation. By the way, just just to note for clarity, both the compounds need not have active alpha hydrogens. For example, if you look at ethanol, which is CH three CHO and HCHO. And you introduce any of which into the mixture, mixture of both of these. Clearly, this does not have alpha hydrogen, but this does, right? So no problem. Uh, it is just that you only get one type of uh, aldol product. Then, uh, basically, uh, you will get a CH2 minus here, and the CH2 minus will attack the HCHO, right? And uh, the, the corresponding aldol product will be formed. Next, we have decarboxylation. Decarboxylation is a process of introducing NaOH and CaO to remove a carboxyl group so RCOH plus that gives you RNH plus Na2C okay complete the synthesis 
by giving out giving missing starting material uh, reagent or product well if you if you oxidize the uh, you know uh, if you oxidize ethyl benzene with KMnO4 and KMH, you will get uh, uh, you will get uh, benzoic acid. Uh, basically, basically any any side chain oxidation will give you benzoic acid. Of course, here you will not get benzoic acid. You will uh, because there's no there's no hydrogens available, so you'll just be left with salt. Will be stabilized by the anion other other uh, other salt, which is in this case potassium. Now again, if you add SS2, they'll all become they'll both become chlorinated. So that is that COCl, COCl. When benzene is two, this is called semi carboxyl right? I think this is something you have seen before. Carboxyl. So you get a semi carboxyl one. I'll write that here. C6H5. CH, <coughs> CH double bond N bond NH CO NH2. That is a product. Semi carbazone. Basically, neglect one NH2 and then whatever is remaining, just write it over here. Okay, that is the thing. Okay, benzene to benzophenone. Uh, Benzene to benzene. So in this case, uh, it is, uh, is as you can see, this is an acyl group, right? If you think about it, this entire thing is an acyl addition to benzene. So what can give an acyl acidation? Well, F triple cracks acylation, right? So imagine adding uh, phenyl uh, benzene acyl chloride. Right, benzyl chloride. If you add benzyl chloride in the presence of one headless AlCO3, then uh, you can get this. <coughs> now, we have a ketone. Ketone is undergoing the uh, uh, Felix reaction. Sorry, a tall, tall stress or stress. So uh, it's going to get uh, oxidized. But you have a ketone that is not going to respond. We have the, the aldehyde here is going to respond to this, and therefore they're going to end up getting virtually the identical thing except you have CO here. Okay, next. So this seems like a cyanohydrin formation, and uh, so what happens here is the cyanide acts the uh, nucleophile. NaCN, the reason for NaCN is that the NaCN acts with a salt, right? It gives you the negative charge on the carbon. So the nucleophilic center becomes carbon. Note that CN is very special. CN, CN is actually called the uh, ambidentate ligand. This is not this is not useful for this chapter, but it will come up later in coordination compounds. That means it has two sides. So if you look at the structure of CN, it has a lone pair of electrons and nitrogen and a negative charge of carbon. This means that it has two centers where it can bond to some, some things. Okay, later you will find out that it will be the metal center coordination complex. But as, as far as we are concerned now, it is it, it can attack from either the negative charge of the carbon or to the lone pairs of nitrogen. However, whenever there is a negative charge of the carbon, it is generally preferred that it will, it will go through the carbon. However, in some cases where there's, there might be a covalent bond between uh, this carbon and some other some other uh, metals, say uh, silver. The night the lone pair of the nitrogen and the ones who take as an attack as a nucleophile. So that that is why you know, that is the speciality of CN. So that's why I use NaCN because you want the negative charge of the carbon to be bonded because you don't want an isocyanide, right? You want a cyanide. Isocyanide is some something with an NC. Okay, so anyway, so what happens here is you get a cyanohydrin formation. Everything remains virtually the same, except this becomes cyanohydrin. That's it. Uh, seventh one. Seventh one is simply a matter of uh, aldol condensation. There's an alpha hydrogen only in the second compound. 
that is an alpha hydrogen. So your final product is going to be CH3 CH minus CHO C6H5 CHO. Uh, it is added. OH. So that is the anal product form. Uh, but of course, be careful because this also they was a given heating. And what happens on heating? The hyd hyd the hydrogen hydroxyl group leaves and you get a bond. So that is the final product. Okay, sodium borohydride reduction. You know that sodium borohydride can only reduce. Uh, Carbonyl groups, so it cannot reduce the ester. Ester is where it is. And instead of the ketone, you have an alcohol. So OH, CH2, C double bond O, O, C, 2, H5. That's the product. CRO3, as everybody knows, is uh, a very, it's a my oxidizing agent. Um, uh, in the lack of H2SO4, so in the presence of H2SO4, it has a very special name. It's called Jones reagent. Uh, but here, uh, it acts as a mild oxidizing agent and oxidizes uh, cyclohexanol to uh, cyclohexanol. Next, you have uh, this compound which gets uh, oxidized to this compound. And we'll see what kind of process it gives this. Uh, this is simply looks like the uh, this looks like the addition of imagine if we can add uh, 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 we can add uh, an OH right somewhere here and then oxidize that would be very nice we have where we have to add the OH here we know that any sort of addition of OH you know uh, will give you the OH here because that is a Marconic product. Unless we had some mechanism which would give you the anti marconic product as a major product. But what, what kind of process gives us the anti marconic product as a major product? Well, hydroboration oxidation. So we will do HBO. HBO will give you, will give you, uh, oh, sorry, CH2OH, and then on this mild oxidizing, maybe PCC, pyridinium chlorochromate is a mild oxidizing agent. Uh, it is used to oxidize alcohols to uh, aldehydes. Now, there is some uh, debate uh, about whether it can only oxidize primary alcohols or whether it can oxidize secondary alcohols too. So, for a long time, I believe that it can only uh, oxidize primary alcohols. But I think I've, I've seen a couple of examples that can also oxidize secondary alcohols. I'm not entirely sure about whether it can do so, but for primary, it can definitely do so. In this case, it is primary, so we don't have much of a problem. So I finally look at the 11th part. Some product upon ozone analysis gives you two molecules of uh, this uh, cyclohexanol. Well, ozone analysis just simply splits the double bond apart and uh, puts in an oxygen atom at either ends of the broken double bond. It's a way you can think about what ozone analysis does. Which means your original starting product must have been. That's it. Okay, 18. Give a plausible explanation for each the following. Cyclohexanol forms a cyanohydrogen to the yield, but 226 trimethyl cyclohexanol does not. Well, the answer really is in uh, part of the steric hindrance. Whenever you look at a name like this, right? You know that it's heavily sterically hindered. And steric hindrance is actually a major factor in the driving of chemical reactions. Uh, you know, when, when things are sterically hindered, it's difficult for nucleophiles to approach. So nucleophiles like a, a cyanide uh, nucleophile here, in this case of cyanohydrin. So it doesn't occur uh, because of the steric hindrance. Since there's no such steric hindrance and cyclohexanone, uh, the nucleophilic attack uh, occurs more readily. So thermodynamic uh, preference is given to cyclohexanone. Uh, okay, second one. There are only two uh, NH2 groups, amine groups and semi-carbocyte. However, only one is one. a semi A very, very interesting question. And it actually has to do a lot, lot to do with the involvement of the, uh, the uh, resonance structure of semi-carbocyte. 
So a, a case for analysis of the resonance form. So first we enter the structure. So you have NH2, C double bond to NH, NH2. So the question is asking, I have a lone pair here and a lone pair here, right? Uh, technically a lone pair here as well. But why, the question asking, why does only this NH2 participate in the formation of semi-carbon zone? Why not this carbon NH2 as well? The reason lies, the reason is because this lone pair of this NH2 is in resonance stabili stabilization with this double bond. As a result, this lone pair is less readily available to donate to this carbon oxygen double bond. Therefore, uh, it is this lone pair which is not, which is not resonance stabilized with anything, which is what is more readily available and that which is what attacks this carbon oxygen double bond. That is the reason. Now, during the preparation of esters from the carboxylic acid and alcohol, due to the presence of an acid catalyst, the water or the ester should be removed as soon as it is formed. That is because if you look at esterification reaction, it's basically acid plus alcohol gives you ester plus water. Very important thing to notice in the presence of an acid catalyst, this reaction is reversible. In the presence of a base catalyst, this reaction is irreversible. Okay, esterification that's an important point. In the presence of an acid catalyst is reversible, whereas in the presence of a base catalyst, it is irreversible. Therefore, because because in the presence of an acid catalyst, because it is reversible, sometimes the reaction, reverse reaction may actually occur, and you'll actually end up, you know, not optimizing your yield, right? So, you know, from uh, chemical equilibrium that if you remove this water as soon as it is formed, then by Lichatlius principle, the reaction will tend towards a state where the quantities, you know, uh, to stabilize the quantities, right? So the reaction will move forward, which means more esters produced. So therefore you need to remove water as soon as possible because of the reaction. In a reaction, reaction catalyzed by a base, this is not necessary because it's irre irreversible, okay. Uh, next question. So here's the next question. An organic compound contains uh, around 70% of carbon, 11% of hydrogen, and the rest of oxygen. The molecular mass is 86. It does not reduce to the reagent, but forms an addition compound with sodium bisulfite, sodium hydrogen sulfate, and gives you positive iodine, iodine from the test. And vigorous oxidation gives you ethanoic and propionic acid. Write the possible structure of the compound. Okay, so uh, first, so generally when something like this is given, I will just like to find out the proportion of the uh, atoms. So if it contains around 70% of hydrogen, I just assume, let, the, let, let, let us have 100 grams of the compound, okay? Let us have 100 grams of the compound ready. That means 69.77 grams of carbon are ready to this, right? That means how many carbon atoms do we have? Around 70 by 20. I'm assuming 69, 70. Okay. So they are 70 by 12. What is 70 by 12? 35 by 6, which is approximately 6. Right. So we have six carbon atoms. Remember, it's completely defined if we don't get a whole number. Like let's say we got something like 6.5 here. 35 is very close to 6. But let us say we got something like 6.5 carbon atoms. Not to worry because you know, maybe uh, this is not exactly 6.5 carbon atoms, right? This is actually 6 into 10 to the power into Avogadro's number, which is a very large number. So we are not, uh, we are not slicing an atom or anything that grand, that's uh, dramatic. This is just a, uh, this is a way to calculate the ratio of the atoms. If you have 11.6 grams of uh, hydrogen, hydrogen, uh, hydrogen, hydrogen is given, this a, Atomic weight of hydrogen is one, right? So therefore, you have uh, eleven. Uh, you have eleven uh, hydrogen atoms. So around eleven point five hydrogen atoms. So and the rest oxygen. So how many grams are already over seventy plus eleven? Eighty one. So around nineteen grams of oxygen is left over, which means around one oxygen atom is left, right? So you have six hydrogen, 11.5, 6.5, 6.5, 6.5, 6.5, 6.5, 6.5, 6.5, 6.5, 6.5, 6.5, 6.5, 6.5, 6.5, 6.5, 6.5, 6.5, 6.
सॉरी सिक्स कार्बन इलेवन पॉइंट फाइव हाइड्रोजन एंड अराउंड वन ऑक्सीजन Now molecular mass is eighty six. So let us just quickly calculate and see what makes sense. So six hundred twelve, right? Uh, twelve is the atomic weight of carbon plus eleven point five. Again, we don't know if it's eleven point five, right? So that's that plus sixteen into one. So this is seventy two. Seventy two plus sixteen is already eighty uh, eight. Oh, eighty-eight plus. Okay, my bad. You give me hundred. Now, exactly what are the? So, so see, this is the ratio of car, car, oxygen, right? So, okay. So, it forms an addition compound of sodium hydrogen sulfate. What does that mean? It's an aldehyde. That's the first thing to come to. Because ketones don't give you positive. Uh, it ketones don't form an addition compound of sodium hydrogen sulfate because they're too sterically hindered. And it gives you positive iodine formation. That means it has a methyl ketone group. Methyl ketone does not mean the ketone. It does not mean. Uh, uh, it just means it has a methyl group ready. On with the oxidation, it gives you ethanoic and propanoic acid. It does not reduce tolerance to acid. So wait, it does not reduce tolerance to acid. It's the ketone. My bad. So which means uh, it gives you ethanoic and propanoic acid. It's easy to control this structure. So it should be. To be that, because it gives you iodine form test, right? So you should have a methyl ketone group. So if it gives you ethanoic acid, that means these two are the uh, these two are the uh, thing. If we should have three other uh, for three other carbon groups for the propionic acid part, which means as a total of one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, should have five. So it has total of five carbon atoms. So five carbon atoms. So let us look, let us see which satisfies the molecule, right? So five carbon atoms is sixty. One oxygen is sixteen. Hydrogen is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is eighty-six. So we are correct. So this is a possible structure of the carbon. Okay. Now we go to the twenty. Now we go to the twentieth question. Okay. So so now we go to the twentieth question. So, uh, in this question, uh, the question is that the, although the three oxide ion has more resonating structure, more number of resonating structures than carboxylate ion, carboxylic acid is stronger acid than three oxide. Why? Because uh, even the three oxide has uh, more resonating structures, carboxyl they are not they are not equivalent. The concept to know here is that equivalent resonating structures contribute more to the stability of the hybrid. So, in in the carboxylate ion, you have R C. Ah, uh, sorry, R C double bond O O minus, which will resonate like that. The form R C double bond O O minus. So, these are equivalent resonating structures. They are far more uh, uh, contributing than the resonating structures of the oxygen ion. That is the answer to the twentieth question. Yes, I think we have reached the end of the chapter. So, basic point to keep in mind is there are a lot of important reactions to remember, but it's very general, generally very useful to keep in mind what kind of reaction gives you what kind of products. So. It's good to remember what you know. Classify reaction as oxid oxidizing reactions, you know, and you know reducing reducing reactions. If you do that, then you'll find out you can you can easily con convert a product on them because you know you know it, it's easy to you know it's good to classify as increasing carbon atoms, you know, decreasing carbon atoms. For example, a decreasing carbon atoms could be NaOHCaF, right? That's a decarboxylation process. Uh, this could be Friedel Crafts, right? Uh, CH three Cl, and it is AlCl three, uh, right? Uh, or it could be, you know, uh, so you know, ox oxidation reactions. You know, it just could be copper at five seventy three Kelvin, right? A reducing reaction could be hydrogen to PdBas and so on. This kind of, these are just examples that I'm giving. But I'm saying you can write down, so write down reactions like this. 
will be easy uh, to, to classify and you know when you have a logic about what you want to do to a compound it will be easier to remember what kind of reactions you you know uh, give you what products you know under what conditions so that is a general gist of this chapter i think okay so thank you